brethren and sistren. <laughs> On this most important occasion, when we debate the merits of a potato pancake and a three-cornered cookie, <laughs> I intend to use this sermon to prove without a shadow of a doubt the superiority and merit of that humble cookie, the Hementiash. <laughs> I shall accomplish this task by employing the most criterion, important criterion available to human beings. Is the item under consideration biblical or is it not? <laughs> what is biblical, as we know, is divinely ordained. Is quite literally true. Is, as they say, the word of God. <laughs> we all know God wrote the Bible. We know this because it is called the word of God. God. <laughs> God himself wrote it. What are we to say? Amen. Praise God. <laughs> now, I have made exhaustive use of my exhaustive concordance, and I do not find the lowly lackey mentioned anywhere in Scripture. I also search for related words, please no. Potato? No. <laughs> Pancake? No. Greasy? No. <laughs> no work. But the hemantash, it's right here. <laughs> My text for this sermon is, of course, the book of Esther to which I shall refer throughout. It's a story we all know well. A certain king of Persia named Ahasuerus. <laughs> it would be helpful, very helpful, if God has written his name as Xerxes I, which is also who he was, but oh well. <laughs> this Ahasuerus had a presumably lovely wife. We get the impression that this king was fond of the babes. Her name was Vashti. And when Ahasuerus tells her she needs to come and show off her beauty to all his pals, she says no. I only consult the finest of biblical scholars for my homiletical research, and some of them say, and this is shocking, shocking, that perhaps Ahasuerus was saying that she needed to appear before them unclothed. I will not use the N-words, not, <laughs> not naked or nude. No, I will not say them dirty words. But I think you know what I mean. So Vashti, who I think we can all agree made the right choice here, is escorted off the scene. She is out of the biblical picture. Those same biblical scholars note that her expulsion was meant to teach other women not to go against their husbands. But if you'll permit me a moment of free pastoral advice, I just want to say that if your husband wants you to strip for his pals, you need to rethink the relationship. <laughs> Amen, hallelujah. <laughs> so now Ahasuerus has a kind of beauty contest across Persia for who's going to be his next queen. And little Esther is, as God writes, shapely and beautiful, I quote. So to make a long, long story short, our little Esther wins the competition over all the other lovelies of Persia and becomes Ahasuerus' next queen. Very good for her. She gets a tiara and everything. It says so right here. <laughs> but as we know, it also turns out to be good for the Jews of Persia. First, her somewhat kind of sort of uncle, Morky Day, <laughs> is positioned to hear before anyone else of a plot to kill King Ahasuerus. He's hanging out on the steps of the palace and he hears two eunuches talking <laughs> about wanting to kill him. If you've had any religious education, you know what a eunuch is. <laughs> a guy who gets to sing in the alto section of the choir because he's so trusted not to hit on women. <laughs> well, Morky Day lets Esther know about the plot, and she in turn tells her new hubby, the king. The plot is foiled, and Morky Day becomes a much more trusted pal of the king than he ever was before. Lousy situation, great outcome. Okay, well, not so great for those two Alpos. 
They got skewered on big steaks a la Vlad the Impaler. Now, when our little Esther was first put in the king's harem, it was under the control of another alto named Hegai. Now, this name might suggest to you that he is a real stud, but don't be fooled. <laughs> Hegai is going to end up being no match for He-Man. <laughs> He-Man, the fellow who tries to destroy the whole Jewish people of Persia. Now, this He-Man was a real looker, the biblical text says so. His name, after all, is He-Man. <laughs> and we know that if something's in the Bible, it's true. So this He-Man could have been nothing but a real He-Man. A specimen of virility, good looks, and no small amount of charm. Ladies, I think you know what I mean. As the ancient Italians used to say, credo nos in fructu eodem esse. I think we're on the same wavelength. Can I have a witness? Gentile friends, it's time for a little instruction. <laughs> when a preacher says, can I have a witness? That is your cue to yell at a warm and loud affirmation for the preacher. Something religious and positive and amen and alleluia, you get the point. So I'm going to try this again. <laughs> can I have a witness? <laughs> excellent, excellent. Oh, thank you to all who participated. And didn't that feel good? You know, just a little spiritual jolt. Okay. All of you, please remember this instruction because it's going to come in handy a little later in my sermon, probably a few times. Amen, hallelujah. <laughs>